Hi everyone, J42-1501. Welcome to day one of SakuraCon 2012. And I'm just here to introduce that we're on well on our way. Hopefully I'll get a lot of footage from SakuraCon 2012. So stay tuned for more footage from the con. Thank you. Oops, sorry. I'm doing video. <laughs> A little minute long. All right, let's, let's move. And yes, Nate, Leela here, Tom, and me. Here we are at day two of SakuraCon 2012. Today we're expecting to see, uh, it's pretty much Toho Day, so we have two Toho panels and a photo shoot and then the after party, so on day two there's going to be a lot of footage to show here, so stay tuned for all what's coming up on day two here at SakuraCon 2012. Family okay. photo. Alright, you know what, I'm going to take a picture too. <laughs> okay. Somehow I caught somebody's flash on that. Oh, cool. Is it, is, is it? cool, thank you. Yes, perfect. I feel like we're taking up a lot of room. Hey. Why do we give me that? Yeah, we're just showing you that. Hey, It's going to happen pretty much right uh, after this panel. Uh, no, 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 it's going to be half an hour when we end. When you, uh, what, was, what, what time were you guys planning on? Okay, okay, so okay, so if you guys can stick around um, for the second panel that comes right after this, uh, then um, once they finish their presentation half of their panel, uh, then they go into open gaming, and then at that point, um, we'll all move out to uh, do the photo shoot. I'm, right now, I'm picking uh, outside on the fourth floor of the patio. Uh, well, um, I, have second, I have a second projector, so we can do a bit of gaming here. Yeah. No, but I mean in terms of the gathering. Um, yeah, there's no other uh, cosplay gathering scheduled uh, after like 6 or 7 o'clock, so uh, pretty much every cosplay spot is more or less open for us. So uh, I guess we'll kind of uh, figure it out uh, during the intermission. We'll have a vote on it or something. But all right. All right, all right. So what the heck is Toho? This is kind of a crash course on Toho, but there, we cover a lot of stuff. So you. Uh, Bet you'll probably find one or two things that's new to you guys, even for the veterans. So, uh, before we get, uh, before we go straight into Toho, uh, we got to um, cover some background. Uh, what is uh, Dojin and what what is what is Comic Head? Uh, how many of you know what uh, Dojin is or Dojin? Oh yeah. All right, it's like a lot of you already do. But uh, Dojin uh, translates to self-made work, uh, meaning that they make uh, anime, music, games, merchandise, anything pretty much fan-made. If, if you can make it, then it pretty much can be a doujinshi, uh, or doujin. Um, doujinshi specific, it means manga. So can be parody uh, of other works, so games, anime, TV shows, uh, live movies, uh, American movies even, or whatever, or original, completely original works. Uh, next up, we have Comic Head. How many of you know what Comic Head is? All right, so Comic Head is comic, uh, short for Comic Market, held twice a year, three days, uh, once in the summer in August and once in the winter in December. And there's over 35,000 circles or artists represented there. And for example, Ame Expo has in the neighborhood about 700, so a factor of uh, what, 50 difference there. Uh, and over 500,000 attendees over the whole weekend, also like another factor of like four or five over even anime expos. Um, circles can sell any, any media. Uh, people sell uh, anything ranging from pretty much printed comic books to music CDs to even NES ROMs. So it pretty much any, again, anything that can be published, uh, they'll, they'll sell them. Uh, they have a designated cos cosplay area, and then they also have a commercial room where uh, the major anime companies come out. And of course, little statistics, 70% of uh, participating circles and 60% of attendees were female. All 
right. And so, kind of talking about the representation of Topo at Comic Head, uh, this is pretty much a chart ranging from uh, winter 2003, which is Comic Head 65, all the way through 75, which is 2008. So over a period of five years, they went from almost next to nothing to uh, almost 1,400. And this was this was the last figure as of about four years ago. So uh, you can imagine it's probably grown much more since then. And then here's a map of Comic Cat 78, which is uh, last uh, two years ago. <laughs> that red box, uh, this is an exhibit hall, and each of those small rectangles represents two uh, artist booths, which is about a six by six space. So there's several hundred uh, uh, individuals represented there. And to give you an idea of how much space that actually takes up, this is a picture of one of the halls. No. You take that red line and you go towards you. And that's the Toho section. <laughs> and if you look in the foreground, way at the bottom center, there's a Yu Yu Go cosplay. <laughs> okay. All right, so with, with that in mind, uh, what is Toho? So Toho is a top-down scrolling shooter. In Japanese, it's called STG, short for shooting game, or in uh, English, it's called shmup or shoot 'em up. Uh, Toho is a specific subgenre called danmaku, which literal translation is bullet curtain. So, uh, and the reason why they call it that is there are often times when there are more bullets on the screen than empty space, meaning there is less safe area than dangerous area. And uh, the Toho games come with uh, six stages and uh, one extra stage, uh, and so. To kind of give you guys an idea of uh, just general gameplay mechanics, uh, I have, there's a little demo here for um, the first stage of Ten Desires, which is the game that was released. Um, that was released last year, uh, the latest one, Toho number 13. So, kind of going over, just kind of, uh, these are, there are some mechanics that are specific to Ten Desires, but I'm going to try to cover the more general stuff. So. Uh, up here in the upper right, we have uh, just general information, difficulty, high score, current score, lives, and spell cards, aka bombs. And then underneath that, uh, we have uh, the other mechanics, which is power, which you increase by collecting the red items. Point item value, which you get that much points by collecting the blue items, and grays. Uh, so grays happens when you, uh, pretty much the bullet crosses your character sprite, but not your hitbox. Uh, and then there's an invisible line on the playing field called uh, Point of Collection, or POC. And if you go above that, you automatically collect all the red and blue items on the screen. You see there. And then here's a mid-boss at the bottom. Uh, there's an indicator for boss location. And then there's the boss health bar. Uh, and the boss indicator location is important, especially when the screen gets so full of bullets you can't even see the boss right. So that's, that helps you find out where the boss is in, in, in the middle of all the bullets. Uh, Grace, uh, so uh, what's, what the, what's being highlighted right now is a, another mechanic called focus. Uh, focus is when you hold down a certain button while you're uh, playing and it accomplishes multiple things. It uh, changes your attack pattern, in this case from a, a seeking bullet to a narrow focus shot. It also slows down your character so you can maneuver between the enemy bullets uh, more easily. And it also reveals your uh, hitbox, which is the white dot around the waist level. And then uh, finally we have the dialogue leading up to the first ba boss battle. In this case it's uh, Yu Yuko. <laughs> and so the boss battles uh, consist of multiple phases which uh, are essentially which are spell cards. Oh, and this is a good place you can see Grays in action. That as, as the bullet crosses, you'll notice the Grays counter on the right side increasing as the bullets cross the character's right. Uh, now the spell cards are pretty much the unique attack pattern uh, that each boss goes through, uh, multiple of them. And each, yeah, each attack pattern is pretty unique from one another. So, uh, and it's pretty much a matter of, a lot of times it's a matter of learning the patterns to know the best way to maneuver around. So, just go ahead and uh, watch the... And then also, at the end of, uh, when she defeats each spell card, you'll see that there's a spell card bonus. And you get that if you defeat 
the particular spell card without using a bomb or dying. And if you're going for a high score, that's you really want to go for that since it's both points. And then uh, each boss battle uh, is usually preceded and um, followed by a brief discussion which uh, also advances the storyline and it's often unique to the playable <laughs> character that you're using at the time. So that's the first stage. Uh, and then, so uh, with that in mind, uh, the next question is who created Toho? And it's created by uh, a group called Team Shanghai Alice, who actually consists of exactly one person, <laughs> who goes by Zoom. And his uh, real name is Junya Ota, and he's born in 1977, so he's 35 this year. And he's also composed his own music since junior high. He learned uh, electric piano and trumpet since he was little, and pretty much he actually provides his own music for his games as well. Uh, when he uh, was younger, he worked at Taito, which made Darius Gaiden another, another shoot 'em up, and those kind of games inspired him, and he really wanted to make games that he wanted to play. And there wasn't really a Don Maku type of game out there like Toho, so he just went out and created it, and the rest is history. And so the main characters uh, are um, Hakure Remu, who I'm cosplaying right now, and she's a shrine maiden at the Hakure Shrine. And there's also uh, Marisa Kirisame, who's a magician or Western style witch. And so the Rebu lives at the Hakure Shrine in Gensokyo, which translates to the Land of Illusions, inhabited by yokai and other spirits. And pretty much the general lead into each story is that the Hakure Shrine is bothered by yokai in some way or another, and she goes out to fix it. Uh, ranging from you know, the sky to turning red to her shrine being leveled in an earthquake. So. Uh, the, the character sprites there uh, above is um, uh, Remu from Remu's character image from Ten Desires, and this is from should be Hiso Tenso. Mm -hmm. so. All right. So, so starting from the very beginning, uh, we have the original five games, which were released on a system uh, called PC ninety eight, different from uh, Windows system of today. And started in 1996, uh, when he was still in college with a club called Amusement Makers, which is still around today. And uh, so between 96 and 98, he released five Toho games. The first one was actually not a uh, the Danmaku style of the current ones. It was actually kind of a cross between uh, Danmaku and a, uh, I guess, Arkanoid style game. And some of the characters that uh, came up in those original five were Raymond Marisa, Yuka, Alice, Mima, who are still, even though uh, characters like uh, Yuka and Alice haven't really had too much presence in the newer games, they still had carried a lot of fans from way back then as well. And then following that, on Windows, starting in 2002, we have the release of uh, Toho number no. 6, Embodiment of Scarlet Devil, and then all the way uh, releasing through Toho 13, last year, 10 Desires, and these games were much more popular than PC-98, the most popular being Embodiment of Scarlet Devil, the first one released for Windows. Uh, and for, <clears throat> when you hear people talking about the different games, you'll notice that they use the abbreviation of the English half of the name. So when people say things like EOSD, they're referring to Embodiment of Scarlet Devil. So if you hear that, that those kind of acronyms in conversation, that's what they're referring to. And uh, there was also Versus Danmaku, uh, which I believe was uh, number, was that nine? nine. Yeah, uh, and that's kind of like if you ever played Twinkle Star Sprites, an old school arcade shooter, it has similar concept as well. And now on top of that, there were also some kind of side games, uh, two of them featuring Aya, uh, 9.5 and 12.5, and that one, instead of shooting back at the enemy, you actually take pictures of the enemy, 
Uh, there's a screenshot in the bottom left, and you get points for uh, various um, attributes to the pictures. And then finally, 12.8, which featured Cherno in Fairy Wars, Great Fairy Wars. And then the other um, official games were uh, fighting games made with in collaboration with Twilight Frontier, starting with uh, 7.5 Immaterial Missing Power all the way through 12.3, he's still 10 seconds which was being played in the console gaming room last night. Yeah. And then finally, uh, there's also some official works, uh, manga and books. Um, you'll be quizzed on this later, so I hope you're taking notes. Uh, and, but needless to say, there, there is actually a, dec a decent amount of official works beyond just the doujinshi and fan works made for it. All right, so. What do people like about Toho? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure you've all seen, seen this uh, motivational poster before. Uh, underneath it says, uh, in the fine print, it says, true Toho fans know no other form of a <laughs> Alright, so, what is it about Toho? Well, first up, is the hard gameplay. So since you expect to die a lot, you get a pretty big sense of accomplishment when you actually uh, achieve, actually manage to make it through a, um, through, through a game without getting a game over, and that's also as you work up the difficulties. So there's, there's other challenges, such as one CC, meaning one coin continue, like, uh, no continues. People set also set challenges using no bombs, uh, things like that. And then there's actually a whole website based around uh, people sharing replays. I forgot the specific website that was. And I know that there's there's actually a website that you can upload your replays to and share with other people to show off how good you are at total. Uh, there's also music. Uh, the music. Again, Zune writes all the music for the games himself, and the background, and it's very catchy. And a lot of fans of music, Dojin groups release their own arrangements and sell them at Comic Head. So some of the more famous or well-known examples uh, on the on the slide here are uh, Eosis, uh, Cool and Create, Silver Forest. Uh, there's many others that I also personally like. Uh, all different styles. Um, they have, uh, I mean, jazz to hardcore to like screamo, <laughs> to, uh, like pretty much any any music genre. This Toho has pretty much been remixed into it, and you can find tons and tons of that. Another uh, famous aspect is the flash videos. Uh, one of them, uh, two examples being uh, Overdrive, which is where the uh, meme uh, Easy Moldo came from. And uh, Marissa stole the precious thing, uh, known for its uh, English halfway through. <laughs> and uh, let's see. And not to mention the characters. And this is a large uh, panorama of the characters from many of the games. <laughs> yeah. There, there are 116 Toho characters featured in this picture, plus one bonus uh, non-Toho character. Uh, let's see, the, the Toho Wiki documents 144 characters, and uh, the, the Japanese popularity poll featured 140 entries. And so there are lots of characters, each with their own backstory and archetype, so they're pretty much something for everybody. That's the general takeaway from that. So here's another drawing of a lot of them. So, and finally, the culture of fans, in my opinion, is what drives Toho uh, the most. And user-created universe, uh, there's even a doujin like SDK, so if you want to make your own Damaku levels, then there's this uh, engine called Damakufu, where you pretty much enter in mathematical formulas and you trace out pretty designs with the bullets. And then people share those levels and challenge each other to beat them. 
And there's also difficulty mods, which are essentially you hack the game. Uh, inside inside most of the games, there's a like a numeric value inside the game attached to a difficulty. And so I think, uh, for example, one game ranks Lunatic, I think around like 18 or 20, and then they they take a mod and they change that number from 18 to like 75. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a couple, uh, I have a few examples of what that looks like uh, if we have some time at the end of the panel. Uh, Zune also promotes derivative works. Uh, I, I mean, he, he made sure not to, you know, he, he, he made sure that people knew that it was open for people to make interpretations of it, make uh, their own side stories. Uh, for example, um, he here is cosplaying uh, Mystia, specifically Oka Misty, which is a completely fan-made character. But um, through a doujinshi, uh, this particular version became super popular. And I'm pairing with uh, local. It's called Night Sparrow Love, if you're curious. And and Zoon actually sometimes, if some of the more popular, if you if you like some of the more popular memes, he actually starts including them in later games, or he makes references to it himself. Uh, and then some examples of fan products. Uh, this example of a lot of posters. Pretty much all of these are all fan created that you can. By a comic head and similar places. Uh, these are uh, at a doujinshi reseller or a doujin reseller, uh, ranging from figures, keychains, bookmarks, cell phone straps, the like, and of course the Toho music remixes. Uh, I think there's a there was a, a torrent out there. Uh, I think. I think the lossless version exceeded one terabyte, and that was that was after the summer comic hit. So they haven't even updated it for like the last six months, and it's already over a terabyte. Oh, just updated one point one terabytes. So yeah, so so yeah, so if you actually wanted to download this giant collection of. Toho remixes, a one terabyte drive is not enough. <laughs> All the music that they offer, and I mean, that's not even 100% complete. So. Uh, another place is actually uh, Nico Nico Doga, uh, the Japanese Nico Nico. Uh, and <clears throat> so the, the top row of labels is, are the primary categories. So entertainment, life, government, science, and then there's an anime game and drawing section. And then the bar, the second bar is the subcategories. And there's uh, an everything category, just all the videos under that. There's an anime category, game category, and then there's a Toho category. So there's a specific subcategory just for Toho, along with uh, Idol Master, and then Net Radio, and uh, Let's Draw. Uh, and then so, for example, uh, music videos. Uh, this, these are uh, <laughs> the screen cap on the right is actually the top five videos on Nico Nico right now. Uh, number two on there is uh, Bad Apple. Number three is, uh, I guess, roughly translates to McDonald was dancing in a dream. Uh, I, if, on YouTube, it was actually titled uh, Mick Roll. If you ever came across it, where they they remix the the Japanese. Um, McDonald's commercials to a Toho song. Uh, also, on the ranking, if you if you look further down, there's uh, Cherno's Perfect Math Class and uh, Tsuru Petan, and many more. Uh, and the actual, it used to be the number one video until last year when the uh, earthquake happened. And then so now the current number one video is actually the uh, is a support video uh, made by Nico Nico for earthquake victims. But prior to that, it was actually holding the number one spot. For quite a while, actually. And then, actually, let's see. Oh, wait a second. Before we get to that, uh, I actually have a, a, a Bad Apple video. Um, yeah. So, and then in awesome. the bottom right, we have Toho Mon, <laughs> which are all uh, pretty much parody games using Toho characters. And I mean, even Toho Mon has, you can even, the, the, each of the Toho characters are actually labeled elemental, just like Pokemon are. And then uh, one standout game is 
Komato Densetsu. Yeah. It was a Toho Mania, uh, which is a uh, pretty much they took the Toho characters, but then put it in using kind of the the game mechanics of Castlevania, which is why it's called Tohovania. And it was made by uh, Frontier Aja, and these are like examples of some of the character designs. It's very very unique to that game. Uh, uh, pretty popular for cosplay actually as well. Uh, and then Frontier Aja actually recognized the American fan base and uh, there's actually an official uh, English and French patch available for the game from their website. Uh, okay, and then from fan games, we go to fan anime. Uh, this one, uh, A Summer Day's Dream, which is a, uh, which was pla is planned to be a three episode OVA, uh, 20 minutes each. The first episode was released at Comic-Cat 75, which was in 2008. Uh, episode 2 was actually supposed to be released this last Comic-Cat a couple months ago, but they said they were still in production, so they delayed it to an unknown date in 2012. And that's a cover for the first DVD there. And then a lot of this stuff can be found at uh, Retai Sai, short for uh, Hakure Jinja Retai Sai, meaning Hakure Shrine Grand Festival. And it started in 2004. Uh, Zune actually uh, presents demos and releases information for upcoming games at these events. And it's pretty much dedicated strictly, it's 100% Toho. It's a, so it's like a mini version of Comic Market, but only Toho goods. And so it's the largest single genre doujin convention in the world. Over 1,000 circles as of 2008. So, <clears throat> remember that I mentioned earlier that AX has 700 artist alley tables. So, they have more Toho uh, tables at this event than they do, than all the tables at AX combined. So, yeah, that's, that's how big it is. And uh, they used to, originally it was held annually in spring uh, to kind of fit with the festival theme, but then they actually added a Red Tai Sai SP uh, two years ago to add a fall event, so now Red Tai Sai is held twice a year. And then kind of extending from that is uh, uh, commercialization. Uh, so there's a, you'll see a lot of official figures, uh, Nendoroids, Figmas, things like that being released. And so, uh, you know, it's kind of, where, where, does, where does Zune stand on these? Considering that he doesn't really, you know, enforce like a strict copyright on Toho. Well, what he does is uh, he takes royalties from commercial products, but not Dojin works. So he actually has a special, essentially, exception made for commercial uh, works such as Nendoroids or Figmas and the like. So the anime that I mentioned earlier, Summer Day's Dream, actually had well-known voice actors. Uh, yeah, pretty much, uh, including uh, Kiko Inoue, uh, who did Bell Dandy from All oh My Goddess, uh, and a handful of others. I don't remember them off the top of my head, but I mean, a few of them are actually top tier uh, voice actors, uh, even now. And so Zune actually expressed concern about first impressions that people might think that, you know, th that Toho is a commercially made anime, um, considering that if they if there's fans of the voice actors or actresses, then they'll see that, oh, there's, there's a Toho anime that was made in their credit list. And so they might get the, Zun want, wanted to make sure that people didn't get the wrong idea that, to think that Toho was some kind of um, a commercially produced product. Uh, and so it's, it's kind of a, I mean, there's you know, arguments for and against it, um, saying that commercialization kind of gets you know, gets the exposure more out there, but then there, there's kind of, you know, do you call it selling out after a certain point, things like that. So a lot of questions come up with that. And so to that effect, he actually has official guidelines published on his uh, website. So uh, Dojin works cannot be sold commercially, meaning like reprinted, mass reprinted, things like that for, for manga, for example. Uh, no commercial works um, without consent. So you actually have to fill out a form to essentially obtain a license from Zune. And 
they restrict uh, the uh, sexual content on it, so they can't. There, there's uh, he won't allow like official uh, body pillow covers, for example, um, from <laughs> at least from commercial uh, mass-produced works, and uh, also not allowed for either doujin or commercial uh, animation from companies, uh, larger companies, even kind of fan-made animations, uh, kind of even tribute animations, essentially. Uh, restricted from the Xbox 360 Indies channel, uh, Android, uh, iPhone App Store, etc. Uh, there, so he doesn't actually he doesn't sanction any ports of his games to these platforms, uh, especially. Or, I actually have to find one. I have to find a total game in the Japanese iTunes store. Oh, actually, uh, they there. I think there was a Chinese company that released a Topo. Um, or to uh, the iPhone. I think I have free. it on my phone. <laughs> it's, it's free, but it's ad supported, and so that's pretty much why he doesn't really he doesn't sanction it because uh, again, the people are making money off of just his work, just by letting people mass download it and collecting ad revenue and all that. So I mean, you there are apps that exist that you can download, but uh, he he does not recognize them as official ports. Uh, Non-Dojin channels, uh, so foreign download sites. Uh, unfortunately, you know that's the way that many of us get uh, access to our fandom for Toho. Uh, as you can imagine, he doesn't officially support those. Uh, no egregious sexual depictions. Uh, no slandering of individuals, groups, or races. Uh, nothing inappropriate given society norms. Uh, mentioning uh, Tokyo Bill 156. Uh, that controversial bill that came up a couple years ago, I think about two years ago, about you know people worrying about pretty much like all H games being banned or more adult like content being banned completely from stores, things like that. Uh, of course, I mean if you look out there, you can find Dojin that covers the entire gamut, even the ones that he doesn't sanction. So, so I mean it's it's. Dojin, so you really can't put a... From previous years, you'll recognize us as the people who were throwing originally. This year, because we've done it three years in a row, we decided to try something different and have Brian do the first introduction. Woo! Yeah, basically, we got kind of bored of what we said. This, who knows Ho and everyone raises their hand. It's When you keep doing an introduction to that, it's kind of difficult. So what we're doing this year is more of a discussion-based approach for the previous year in tow to try to like, get engaged with the more experienced people. And then from there, after it ends, we'll split into the photo shoot and open gaming. And just before we do that, we'll hold a trivia session to give away some tow keychains. There's six. There we go, six. So, yes, yes. there'll be a wide range of questions, starting ranging from gaming to fandom. So. It should be pretty uh, spread out who can actually get them. But I do notice that we are missing one chair, so while I have well, one presenter, so while I am not coughing Tokyo right now, I saw this man steal, so I shall summon Gilgamesh. <laughs> get up here, Gilgamesh. I command it. <laughs> taking the fact that I know everything about this era a little bit for granted there. <laughs> You're perfect. <laughs> so just before we start, let us have inter everyone introduce themselves. Well, Gilgamesh? <laughs> you can call me Garugamesh if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Uh, well, my name's Joe. Everyone calls me Cookie. I draw a lot of Toho art. And I was, I liked Toho before, it was cool. <laughs> Toho's cool? Yeah. <laughs> this isn't Zephyr Alley yet. Alright, and I'm Luke, usually known as C27. And I can't think of anything interesting to say about myself right now. So. I'm Andrew, uh, people know me better as Bastille. I've run this for the last 
three years across five different presentations at several different conventions. And that's why I'm changing this up because five things over and over again is kind of taxing. <laughs> So, first things, I'm sure at least some of you know this, but Zoom got married! Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To the girl in the picture, not the brewery. <laughs> yeah. For the record, they met um, during Imperial Night, so yes, they've been together for a very long time, and they were officially, they were officially married last year, but the Marriage ceremony will not be until Reitai sign, which it means Zuna will not be at Reitai sign this year. Apparently, every single other weekend except for Reitai sign is busy for him, and so that is priority. Yeah. And yes, as everyone knows, they, they joke that Aya was Zuna's girlfriend and because of her prominence, but she predates Aya. Maybe I was based off of her. <laughs> the next big event was last year, Toho broke one million tags on Pixiv. And as you can see, some people recognize, recognize this from the past presentation, except in pure, well, mostly pure English. So uh, as you can see, like, there's Toho with the 1.2 million. Uh, Huh, it doesn't actually, oh no, no yeah, there, there is the uh, Japanese tag that he was talking about, it isn't translated. <laughs> and then yeah, the top five Toe characters you can see are Sir, uh, Chirino, uh, Reimu, Maris Marisa, Amelia, and cut off, because she is not important, is Alice. Oh. <laughs> You guys actually pay attention to a couple of the other contests. So Alice may or may not come in second place, which is a pretty good deal. What's second Yeah, she came in second place behind Raymond, but you know, that's never gonna happen. Alan has some very dedicated fans for some reason for some reason because she came in second place in this year's popularity contest. I cannot fathom why. <laughs> it's it's not like she wanted for you to go for her. <laughs> The Toho Lost Music Collection also broke one terabyte, and, and then as you can see, one point terabyte, the images alone are 32 gigabytes, and then, yeah. The Lossy is, I think, like 300 megabytes now, so either, 300 gigabytes, and yeah, you are, basically, if you're using uTorrent, this will not, this will not work with uTorrent. It is that big. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Continuing along, um, for those you should recognize Yellow Zebra, they're the ones who do Emma Grand Prix. They retired, so we will actually no longer have the Toe Emma Grand Prix. For those of you that don't recognize that, that was actually a couple of videos we just showed today. We can always have someone step up and take his place. If we have any volunteers out here. I don't think anyone can manage. And then in addition, uh, Kuhn and Sekunia, for, well, for starting off, who knows what Flowering Night is? There you go. For those of you who don't know, Flowering Night is basically a yearly music concert for a lot of the Toad, toad bands. It's pretty popular and Kuhn and Kriyan Sekunia have been there since the very beginning. Is it in, was it 07, sorry? I think it was 07. But yeah, it's been running since 07. Uh, it skipped a year in, in 2000, uh, 2010. And it, just, was like, just last year, it actually had managed to be so big that it took two days to run. But yes, for some reason, the uh, two, two of the bands that have been there since the start will not be here, will not be there. Uh, for those who watched it last year, uh, you might rec you might remember that there was an awesome encore at the end where those two came on and um, if, if you actually follow, like they have a band that the two of them combined called The Roots, and when they put together the DVD, they decided to entirely scrap the encore. So all that awesomeness is, unless you were watching the live stream, you wouldn't, wouldn't know it existed. And then 
Yeah. Second year has an excuse because they're doing a live tour right now, but Kumo Paint is saying nothing as to why they aren't showing up, so. Because I'm tired. <laughs> 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 And then some of you might remember hearing back in um, December about the white cams and stuff. How many people actually uh, read about that? <laughs> Very few people. Okay then. Well then, the, this doesn't make as much sense. But basically, and in, in uh, on December twentieth, uh, it broke out that one of the large um, dojin stores in Japan was getting their toe um, selling rights taken away because uh, they, they were violating the terms of terms of use for uh, that Zoom has laid out. And it became a really huge debate over um, like how this might change the um, t the terms of use for Toho again. And in the end, nothing really came of it. Like lawsuits were threatened because of uh, White Camps apparently having a contract from 2007. But in the end, in March, the their rights were eventually restored, and that's basically how they're leaving it for the fan base to, uh, to is concluded to. So. I made sure to include it because I think that some people would know of it, but they didn't know the rights were restored. So, can you give an example of the merchandise that caused this? that caused it? They were trying to commercial. They were trying to sell commercialized merchandise that Zoom didn't feel was covered by the by his terms of service. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to cover racy DNA, <laughs> visual novels, perverted DVD. <laughs> I should guess it would probably be Dr. Kurokawa's just due to the fact that White Canvas typically does not deal in uh, Doginchi. They deal in a lot of the, off the other merchandise like uh, Dr. Kurokawa's, uh, keychains, well, lots of odds and ends. It's only, mainly um, Tornoana and everyone else who covers the Doginchi, so. And um, also, recently there have been some uh, Dojin artists coming over here to the U.S. Um, B. Cup, is anybody familiar with B. Cup's work? Yes! All right. All right. He has um, been appearing in, at the New York Comic Con for the last couple of years. And also, um, right, something going on right now at Anime Boston, um, Mizuki Hitoshi. Yes, he, he, um, he's the one who, uh, who draws um, Hang In There Kogasa-san, if anybody's familiar with that. Yeah, he's, um, the people on, uh, on Shrine Maiden had a fundraiser to bring him over here, paying his way and putting him on their panel. So this is kind of... Um, so basically we got one left. Yes. Yes, we're very jelly. But <laughs> possibly. That's something all of you to chip in. This is something I can stand behind. There is a possibility of other conventions bringing bringing other guests. So it's something to consider. Yeah, because well, next year thankfully, Emmy Boss is on a different lead, so we don't have the competition. Which is also why we're dragging some, some of their pants over here just to see how awesome we are. <laughs> if any of you don't recognize either of those two uh, dojins, I highly recommend them. <coughs> Dojin artists. What is to come for Toho? Well, some of you might recognize this because it is really twice now. It was supposed to come out in January and never got delayed. It was supposed to come out in April, uh, right before the, uh, week, well, in, in the March, and then got delayed again, which also annoyed me because I'd intended to give those away as prizes during, the, during this panel, but yay, delays. Uh, basically what a symposium of post-mysticism is, um, if anybody here, um, oh, what was I gonna say? <laughs> uh, I get entirely too nervous at these. Um, it's an introduction of all the characters from the newer games, um, all from MOF to Ten Desires. It's um, sort, sort of a, a follow-up to the first introduction, but what was that? 
Uh, I might just perfect memento right strict now. sense. Yeah. Perfect, perfect, me perfect, perfect memento is strict sense. Thank you. Yes. Hopefully, this one will not have I in it. You have perfect memento is strict sense at home. But yeah, penis of course, they can't remember. I is beyond everyone, so hopefully, this is a bit more uh, legitimate source. <laughs> And then in addition to covering the characters from the games, it'll also go in detail onto the three religions in the Toe in the Toeverse. Uh, Shintoism, Buddhism, and Taoism, which was, was introduced in uh, Ten Desires. And the next this <laughs> possibility that will become a preview of the next Toho game, too. Yes, the next Toho game, Zun is preparing. <laughs> No. <laughs> Unfortunately, with Zoom not attending Rate Side this year, it's unknown if they actually are going to release a demo, uh, the, the, if the, how it will be distributed, because normally he's there to, on hand to sell everything. But due to the fact that you know he, he's too busy every, every other weekend to get married here, and so he has to take Rate Side off, he has to be working on the game. Or just incredibly true. Oh, maybe he's starting his own brewery. Yeah. And so, just before we end things, the trivia. Let us bring up some of our trivia masters, like Game Master Kepis. <laughs> I was told earthbound, I died valiantly. I know it. Oh my god. Yeah. I am not. It is not the bad thing. I have to make an observation. Oh my god. Yeah. Or you can take the one I just realized there's a nice amount of UFO characters here. Yep. No. Oh, no, that's 
They go right to A. We should have um, the book of Kaguya fight and we break it up. Filming and photography at the same time. Wow, 380 pictures. That's good, Dongi. For some reason, that's going to watch a lot of fans. Yeah. Hey, Point five. I don't know if you have any 9.5.
that catch is more terrifying. What? Doing the Michael Jackson. Yes. The pits need to be on Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 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 <laughs> that suit, uh, Sawako reminds me of a mask. <laughs> Don't fart, nobody farts. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong match, Master Spark. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Faster, longer. Better. Keep it higher. Keep it level. Keep it ground. If possible. Good job. Raise your arm a little. Higher. A little bit more. Pete, you're playing for it. One more pose. Yeah. Chris. Battery just died. On mine? No, on mine. Can you send the rest to me? What? I will point a note to that. Oh, <laughs> 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 
There's Mixie right here. All those two who's out here. We have all the two who's. Two who's. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. We are starting to do that. Spotlight! Spark! Oh, that's a cool 